Exercise 3. Ritter issues bonds dated January 1, 2011 with a par value of $300,000. The bond's annual contract rate is 9% and interest is paid semi-annually on June 30 and December 31st. The bonds mature in three years. The annual market rate at the date of issuance is 12% and the bonds are sold for $277,872. Remember the inverse relationship between the market rate and the selling price. When the market rate is higher, the selling price is lower. What is the amount of the discount on these bonds at the date of issuance? The discount is the difference between the par value $300,000 and the selling price $277,872, a discount of $22,128. How much total bond interest will be recognized over the life of these bonds? we calculate the difference between what gets repaid and what gets borrowed. These bonds have a par value of $300,000 and the contract rate is 9%. The contractual obligation is to repay 9% of $300,000, $27,000 per year. But since the bond's interest is being paid semi-annually, this $27,000 is divided by two, two payments per year of $13,500. In total, over the three-year term, there will be six payments of $13,500, a total of $81,000 in interest payments. The final payment is equal to the par value $300,000. So in total, over the three years, the total to be repaid is $381,000. When the market rate is 12%, Ritter is able to borrow $277,872. Total interest over the bond's three-year term is $103,128. Requirement 3 asks us to use the effective interest method to amortize the discount for these bonds. Unlike the straight-line method, which keeps the dollar amount of interest constant over the bond's term, the effective interest method keeps the interest rate constant over the bond's term. And you've probably seen something very close to the effective interest method at the bottom of your credit card statement. At the bottom of your credit card statement, you'll see the balance that you owe, the interest rate. They multiply the amount that you owe by the interest rate to calculate the amount of the interest expense. Then, depending on how much you paid on your credit card, the balance in your credit card either went up or down. So let's see how this one works. We begin January 1, 2011. This bond had a carrying value of $277,872, the amount Ritter was able to borrow. The initial discount is $22,128. At the end of the first period, June 30, 2011, the first $13,500 payment is made. But how much of this $13,500 is interest and how much, if any, is principal. The true cost of borrowing on this loan is 12%. The market rate is the true interest rate. So here's a horrible thought. If you owed $277,872 on your credit card at 6% interest, interest expense would be $16,672. Well, if the interest on your debt is $16,672, but you only made a payment of $13,500, the carrying value of your debt would increase. The difference is $3,172. And we expected the carrying value of our debt to increase because we know that the carrying value of a bond always moves toward its par value. Since it's starting at $277,872 and will ultimately be $300,000, we expect the carrying value to increase. We are going to amortize the discount by 3,172. 22,128 minus 3,172 is 18,956. The amount of the amortization is the movement toward the face value. This bond will move toward the face value by $3,172. Since the unamortized discount is now 18,956, the carrying value is 300,000 minus 18,956, 281,044. 
and it stands to reason that if your carrying value, your debt balance, is higher, the amount of your interest is also going to be higher. So let's see how it works. At the end of the next six months, we make another $13,500 payment. Bond interest expense is equal to 6% of the carrying value. 6% of $281,044 is $16,863. If interest expense is $16,863, but the cash payment is only $13,500, the carrying value of the debt will increase. The amount of the increase is the difference between bond interest expense and cash interest paid. The amortization of the discount is 3,363. The amount of the amortization is always the movement toward the face value. The carrying value of this bond will increase by $3,363. We accomplish this by subtracting 3,363 from 18,956. The unamortized discount drops 15,593. And if the discount is smaller, the carrying value is higher. 300,000 minus 15,593 is 284,407. At the end of the fourth period, another payment of $13,500 is made. We expect the balance in bond interest expense to continue to increase because the carrying value is increasing. 284,407 multiplied by the semiannual market rate of 6% is bond interest expense of $17,064. If the interest is $17,064 and the amount paid is only $13,500, the carrying value of the debt will increase by the difference $3,564. The previous unamortized discount amount was $15,593. Because we're amortizing $3,564, the unamortized amount drops to $12,029. And if the unamortized discount is lower, the carrying value is higher. 287,971. December 31, 2012, the end of period 4, another $13,500 cash payment is made. Bond interest expense is the carrying value $287,971 multiplied by the semiannual market rate of 6%. Bond interest expense, $17,278 minus the amount of cash interest paid is the amount of the discount amortization, 3,778. We subtract 3,778 from the unamortized discount, dropping the unamortized discount to 8,251, and add 3,778 to the carrying value. At the end of period 5, cash interest paid is $13,500. Bond interest expense is the $291,749 carrying value multiplied by 6%, the semi-annual market rate. 291749 multiplied by 6% is 17505 The amount of the discount amortization is the difference between 17505 and 13500 $4,005. We subtract 4,005 from 8,251, dropping the unamortized discount to 4,246. The carrying value increases by $4,005 to 295,754. And in the sixth and final period, cash interest paid is $13,500. And in the final period, we need to adjust for any rounding. The balance in the unamortized discount needs to be zero at the end of the final period, which means the amount of the amortization has to be $4,246. The amortization is the difference between bond interest expense and the cash interest paid. The bond interest expense in the final period must be $17,746. The carrying value at the end of the bond's term is always equal to the par value, $300,000. Total payments over the three-year period, $81,000. Total bond interest expense, 103128 Notice how that agrees with our calculation in Requirement 2. The total discount amortization always has to equal the amount of the initial discount, in this case, 22128
So the key points here, when you're using the effective interest method, the interest rate stays constant. Bond interest expense is calculated as a constant rate equal to, in this case, the semi-annual market rate of 6%. The amount of the discount amortization is always the difference between cash interest paid and bond interest expense. And the carrying value always moves toward the par value. This is accomplished by systematically amortizing the discount. The balance in the discount account at the end of the period always has to be zero.